I thought we'd do a little uh, discussion of the axe and adze choices, uh, which are two of the main tools uh, for bowl carving. And of course, there's a lot of axes around. There's a lot of different styles. You have everything from, uh, you know, big uh, hewing axe here. Uh, And so the weight of this is going to be a little problem for bowl carving. You know, you don't want to carve a bowl with this, although you could if you, if you want to try to hold this up. And, and actually, um, I'm not being completely facetious here because there, there are a lot of, you know, factors about an axe, including the weight. Depending on your strength and how much you're used to wielding an axe, um, you know, a heavier axe does have advantages because you can use the momentum of that tool to power through the wood and you don't have to swing quite as hard or as often. Uh, but remember, every stroke you take, you have to lift the axe back up. And so a heavier axe, you know, if it's too heavy, obviously can be tiring. So I wouldn't want to carve, you know, a bowl with that axe. Um, you know, this axe is lighter but the handle's far too long. This is a felling axe, and it's great when you're taking a big swing. And believe it or not, there actually have been some bowls that I've uh, carved that were so large that I actually did start some of the hollowing, taking out some chunks with, with this axe, and uh, even some of the exterior work because the log wouldn't move anyway, it was so big. But generally, you're not gonna use a felling axe for bowl carving work. You could, you know, you know, the head's not that much bigger than a um, carving axe, but, you know, the handle's obviously going to be in the way. Uh, this is something that, that could be used as sort of a, a limbing axe or a woodsman's axe. It's kind of convenient for little odd jobs and stuff. And it's got a nice, you know, weight to the head. You could carve spoons and bowls with it. But I do find that the uh, handle still gets in the way because a lot of the bowl work, especially when you get down to the finer stages, you're choking up a little bit. And it can really, you know, be a safety issue too when you're, you're choked up and, and the handle might bump the edge of the uh, chopping block or, you know, uh, bump your body and get in the way and throw off your stroke. So the bottom line is there's a number of, of makers now that are making what they'll either call a carving axe or a sloyd axe. Uh, sloyd is just a, a, a Swedish term for handcrafts or handiness. And uh, so this is the axe that I use uh, just about all of the time. I've had this for years and years now. I don't remember exactly how many, uh, uh, 12 or 15 years or something. And this is made by Grands Fors Brooks. It's called their Swedish Carving Axe. Um, it has, you know, the, the major advantages for carving. You have this curved edge that actually lets you uh, create a little bit of a, a hollow and, you know, with the, the two tips free. And this, this cutout in the uh, bit of the axe allows you to get your hand right up here close and, and even put your finger over the edge. And you can, you can shave wood down with it and have very, you know, a, 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 a lot of control uh, as you're doing some of the finer work. And so I can choke way up. I can come back here to this nice uh, flared handle at the bottom and I can have a secure grip and take a good swing. And the curved edge helps to create a slicing cut as, as the, the ax is coming down through the wood on an arc, you get a nice slicing swinging motion uh, and you have this extended uh, tip of the ax that helps to get into some fine places. And so, uh, I enjoy the weight of this axe. Um, I forget exactly how much it weighs, but uh, more people, or there are some people that feel it's a little too heavy, but I've gotten used to this and I like the weight of it because it, you know, the momentum of the tool, uh, 
powers down through very well and you know it's less less work less strokes um, so this is the Grands Forsbrook Swedish carving axe and you know this is the one I use most of the time um, if you're concerned about it being heavy uh, this is an axe I recently picked up uh, this is the Hans Carlson Sloyd axe and again, I don't want to, I certainly don't want to make it sound like I'm advertising for certain tools. Um, there are many more makers uh, out there making great uh, axes and adzes than, than I have tried. Um, I'm just showing you the ones that I happen to have. This is a Hans Carlson, again, Hans Carlson Sloyd axe. You know, like the Grands Forest Brooks, you can see it's got the, the cut under the handle but you can probably even tell just by looking here that there's, there's a little bit less steel in this axe, so it's, uh, but it still has a pretty comparable cutting edge length and, and sweep to it. Um, it's lighter, uh, significantly lighter, so if you're just mainly uh, uh, you know, carving out spoon blanks with it, uh, this would be great and it also is fine for for carving bowls um, the one difference is and I don't know if this is evident but the edge of this axe has a symmetrical grind there uh, are two bevels one on either side and they are the same length and essentially the same bevel on either side um, and in general that's a it's a good idea for for a carving axe and of course you could use it right-handed or left-handed if if you're a left-handed person my uh, the carving axe I typically use has a shorter bevel steeper bevel on the right side and a shallower longer bevel on the left side and uh, that gives me that means in in the act of carving I don't have to tip the axe quite as far over to make the contact with the wood which leaves, you know, makes for a more efficient stroke, but I also can't carve as concave of a shape um, as I could with this axe that has a, a steeper bevel on the left side that contacts the wood that I can rock off of. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's always compromises, but I find this one, you know, works out fine. I can do a, a slight um, concave like around you know near the handles um, but I still get a pretty efficient stroke so I have mainly three adzes I, I do have an adz that has a uh, longer handle for doing some of the you know roughing stages on some very large bowls but in general I just use these a combination of these three and 90% of the time I'm using this one right here. This is an ad again I've had for many years. Um, this is by Hans Carlson uh, again in Sweden he, uh, and a uh, blacksmith uh, family in Sweden and this is uh, an ad that has I think this is his uh, 700 gram ads if I recall and it's got a, a head that's about two and a quarter inches wide and it's got a, a flat area in the middle or, or a shallow sweep area in the middle and then it abruptly uh, comes up above so it's called a complex curve rather than a uh, regular curve that's the same throughout and so what this does it allows a, a more subtle texture while you're working with the ads but the lips rising up means the corners aren't going to dig in as you're taking uh, the chips out. And so I really like that edge shape. Uh, I bought the, the head and handled it myself. The one thing you have to keep in mind when with, with an ads, it's a, it's a very difficult tool to design and have work well because you, the swing of the tool uh, and the in combination with the the angle of the bevel and the angle of the head. Uh, if, the, if I tried to take this same head and stick a very long handle on it, when I swing that tool, it's just going to be the, the top of the bevel is just going to be slapping into the wood. So you want 
the edge to be cutting into the wood at 90 degrees to your to your pivot here. So I always think of it as, you know, you want the angle of the bevel to be roughly at 90 degrees to where the pivot point is that you're swinging the tool. And good manufacturers, even when they're handling their own tools, of course, keep that in mind, but not all do, so it's one thing to keep in mind. So I like this handle that has, uh, again, a little bit of a, uh, a flare at the bottom uh, so that when I'm swinging the tool, I don't have to have a death grip on it and I feel like I've got a good purchase to pivot the tool on. Um, this is a very similar one made by uh, Jason Lonan here in the United States, I think North Carolina if I'm not mistaken. And it's similar but this one has a uh, shorter head, a uh, little different handle design and a more abrupt bevel. So I'll use this if I need to get into a little bit tighter spaces, but again, it has the complex curve at the top and it works very well. This is an ads that's made by uh, File Swiss Made. Uh, well, the head is, and uh, the way it comes, I don't like the way it's ground, and you know, I, I would not, unless you want to do a lot of grinding unless they change the way they grind the tool um, I, I wouldn't recommend this ads and again unless you're familiar with regrinding and want to reshape the tool because this the bevel was completely on the inside which means you have nothing to rock against to get the the tool to go through the wood and back out again and so I had to totally grind this tool back and reestablish a new bevel and now it actually works pretty well. It's a much lighter adds, uh, which it can be a problem for you know powering through the wood. Again, I've handled this myself, rehandled it, and you can see this is just another variation in various you know makers adds as you can get. This one has a very steep sweep, um, more like a number nine and a gouge, um, and in tighter small bowls. And you can also see the head takes much more of a dive here, which lets you move it in a much tighter radius uh, through the material. Uh, and of course, with, with the tight sweep here, you could do much smaller, tighter bowls and rough out um, smaller pieces. So again, those are just the, you know, some of the tools that I have. I don't have, you know, uh, a, a great number of tools. Um, it's just more that I would have to sharpen. And so I uh, try to just maintain the ones I have very well and get to know that tool really well. It's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, develop a very close relationship or very close relationships with fewer tools rather than have a bunch of tools that you don't know very well and take care of them, take care of the relationship.